Having a worthy rival to go against, to challenge you, to give you a target, a benchmark, is important. I want to make that perfectly clear. However, you can get so carried away with trying to beat that rival, so consumed by beating that rival, that you lose the entire plot. Humor me for a second. Think of this scenario. You're a runner, like I was back, back, back in the days. And you've got a rival that's always kicked your ass the past few years in the mile. Or depending on where you are, maybe they call it the 1600 meters. But let's just say the mile. And you've been spending your entire off season training, like I'm gonna beat this person, I'm gonna beat this person, I'm gonna beat this person. And finally, you get towards the end of the season, let's say it's your conference meet, and lo and behold, coming down the stretch, the last 100 meters, you go flying by all those strides that you did, all of those plyometric sprint work that you did, help you finally close the gap, you beat your rival in the final 100 meters with this massive closing kick, and you're like, God damn, I got him! And then you realize you finished 10th out of 15 runners. You were basically in the bottom third of the field. You beat your rival, but does it fucking matter? Did you win? Did you win? And when I look at this crap, this Friday night war between SmackDown and AEW Rampage, to all those people that were hyping this up as competition is a great thing. Competition will bring out the best of everybody. Competition will do nothing but make things better for all parties involved. I have to ask, what in the fuck are you smoking? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. We have seen this play out time after time in the wrestling business over the past several decades, and yet people don't learn from the past meaning we're likely doomed to repeat it. This type of petty tit-for-tat back and forth, nobody wins. And if you look at these numbers from Friday night and think that any of these numbers indicate a win for anybody, you're a fucking clown. Clown. This is not something to celebrate. This is something to clown because it's an embarrassment. It's an indictment on professional wrestling as a whole. It validates what I said about all this buzz that you're talking about doesn't do any damn good if it's just buzzing amongst the people that are already going to watch or in some cases that like to tweet about it and still aren't freaking watching anyway. The hell are you celebrating? Why are you so geeked up? Why are you sitting there doing backflips? And joining with your brothers in pop propaganda like Meltzer and fucking Alvarez and Keller and so forth. Stop it! This is ridiculous. Like when you look at the overall viewership for SmackDown and Rampage and that story on Friday night. SmackDown's a two and a half hour show. So much longer time to maintain your overall viewership. Much longer time to maintain your key demo, that 1849 demographic. Can we at least agree on that? that two and a half hours is longer than one hour. If we can't agree on basic fundamental facts anymore, then what the fuck are we even talking about? SmackDown's total viewership is 866,000, give or take. AEW Rampage's total viewership is $578,000. 578,000 dollars. 578,000 viewers. Probably about as much as the damn thing is all worth now. 578,000 viewers. SmackDown, 866,000 viewers. For context, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it back in October of 2019? In fact, October 2nd, 2019, when you had the first ever episode of AEW Dynamite, and then you had NXT also running two hours in opposition. Didn't those two shows combined do like 2.3 million viewers? 2.2, 2.3, something like that. And you can make the time slot argument all you want about Rampage. Fuck that shit. Rampage is barely getting half of the viewers of goddamn Dynamite. Barely half of the performance in the key demo that only truly became a freaking thing for the wrestling media to talk about in the last couple of years 
because they were doing the good bidding of their fucking sugar daddy or their zaddy, whatever the hell you want to call him, Tony Khan. Must have been giving them strippers and images of Kenny Omega's butt crack to snort it off of. I don't know what the fuck. You remember when we used to talk about ratings when it came to wrestling just a few short years ago and you would actually talk about the actual rating number and then there would be a talk about viewership? Wrestling has gotten to be so pathetically bad in this sense that we've totally gotten rid of that. It used to be like Raw did a 3.1. TNA Impact did a 1.2, which equates to 1.4 million, 1.5 million viewers. Raw's 3.1 might equal 3.5, 3.7 million viewers, something like that. It's so bad now, we don't even talk about the fucking rating point. But you got people talking about like this is a great thing. This is a war worth fighting. AEW's coming out on top. By God, they got the win. If this is what you define as a win, the hell does losing feel like? AEW Rampage. 0.24 in the key demo. Whoopity doo. Yes, yeah, running at different time from SmackDown, but also on a network that's available in a few million more homes as opposed to SmackDown. That was put on FS1 because of baseball playoffs. Come on now. Like SmackDown's numbers on FS1 are always shit because FS1 is a shitty network. Who the hell watches FS1? Rampage on TNT is just another line show in their lineup. Whereas SmackDown on FS1, the few times it airs on there a year, is a fucking flagship show in terms of that piece of crap network and their overall viewership and their key demo ratings. And to the whole thing about... The key demo. That is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the viewership that you have within your ad times and how much revenue you generate from said ads. All these numbers indicate to me is that these wrestling shows, which tend to be a bit of a financial loser for these networks anyways, regardless of the rating that they generate because they've historically by precedent, always gotten a fraction of the total advertising revenue of other shows that do less ratings than this, frankly. All this means is you're running commercial free shit at different times throughout your shows. You're just becoming a bigger financial loss. Cutting off your nose to spite your face. Who the fuck is winning here? And you're going to see a lot of these clowns talking about, well, AEW Rampage and SmackDown in the 30 minutes they ran head to head. It was a win for AEW. Let's look at that for a second. That first 15 minutes, 10 o'clock to 10.15, you had Sasha Banks and Becky, their match. Did 272,000 viewers in the key demo. AEW had Punk versus Seidel, 363,000 viewers in the key demo. Obviously, quite a bit of a win there. Even though you're not running any ads, what the fuck difference does it make? But whatever. From a pure numbers standpoint, in terms of the key demo number 18 to 49, AEW wins. Then you go to 10.15 to 10.30, AEW and WWE with 293,000 viewers each in that key demo. That's a tie, last time I checked, for all intents and purposes. You got people talking about acknowledging the bunny and acknowledging Ruby Soho because they drew on an equivalent level with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Or you could frame that up differently like a smart person would and say, hey, these two managed to be part of a segment that lost 70,000 viewers in the key demo. Meanwhile, a contract signing segment at the end of a two and a half hour fucking smackdown on an inferior network actually gained 20,000 viewers. That's the right framing in the right context. But you know, when it comes to pushing Tony Khan's sugar daddy agenda, you know these fucking bought and paid for clowns in the wrestling media. You know what story they're going with. But people talking about who won here. Nobody wins. How could you hear those numbers? Look at those numbers and think that anybody wins. Stop making excuses. I know the spin is coming. Well, UW Rampage has been around very long. No! Stop it! SmackDown extended 30 minutes. And they went commercial free. How does that generate ad revenue for FS1? Oh, that's right, it doesn't. Why extend your show? 30 minutes for one week on a network that already sucks, knowing that your rating is already going to be bad. I'm sure there are other factors and other reasons, but that's not what we're considering here. Just the fundamental premise of why in the fuck would you want to do that? Because all you're doing is giving credence to the competitor. 
Why are you giving them any airtime? It's like when Roman comparing himself to CM Punk and talking about CM Punk and talking about AEW. Some of the things he said are absolutely true. And yet, at the end of the fucking day, he should have no-sold that shit. Because any breath you waste on them takes away from you. Any breath that you waste on them gives them credence. Why in the hell would you do that? Why make a dumbass petty move to give AEW any type of anything over you whatsoever? Making it seem like they're in your heads a little bit. That's dumb. Focus on your own lane. Because what you ended up doing is you basically undercut the first two hours of your SmackDown so that way you can have Sasha and Becky towards the in that half hour and Brock and Roman in that second part of the half hour from 10 to 10.30 Eastern. What the fuck did that accomplish? You still didn't crack 300 viewers in the key demo. That's stupid. You undercut the first two hours because you wanted to play petty fucking games. That's dumb. And then AEW wins the fucking demo. What the hell does that matter? You still look at that number, the overall 18 to 49... 18 to 49 performance is soft as Charmin. Let's not pretend like that's some glowing, outstanding number. I know from an advertiser standpoint, it doesn't matter so much, but total viewership still matters in the terms of the overall reach and scope. And when you're trying to factor in ratings, even though Nielsen itself is a somewhat discredited way of doing it, but now since AEW is getting some type of benefit in some ways, of course, it's really going to matter. Total viewership still does matter because it can be a measurement of the entire scope of your product. And that sucked again. You're getting 1.1-ish million people to watch Dynamite. You could can barely convert half of them to watching Rampage on Friday night. I don't want to hear about the time slot bullshit excuse. Don't give me any of that. You're taking half of your viewers and two nights later, they're not watching your product for whatever damn reason. You ran some of your show commercial free, so again, how's that good for AEW, TNT? How is that generating ad revenue? Soho and Bunny, their match lost 70,000 viewers in the key demo to Brock and Roman's contract signing. Like you would think, as much as Tony Khan got into a coked up rage tweet storm and was going at Vince and WWE, you'd have think it had done better than Soho and the Bunny during this fucking time slot, you moron! Like, why wouldn't you put Brian Danielson and Suzuki there? No, instead, this dumb dick put him on YouTube. So we're at the peak of when you were watching it live. He only had 98,000 viewers. To those of you that are going to say, well, you know, uh, that, you got up to like a million or more now. Yeah, several days later, they undercut Rampage to do this buy-in show to take away no viewers from SmackDown. The fuck would you do that for? You say, well, you put it on YouTube, it's awesome, more people can see it. Number one, you're overvaluing the in-ring component. Number two, this type of match actually would play out well on TV because people actually take these guys seriously. Number three, Brian Danielson, arguably the biggest or second biggest name that you have on a full-time basis in this company right now, and you're putting them on a fucking buy-in show. Who does that shit? And why couldn't you have the match on Rampage and then put it on the internet? For everybody to watch. Oh my god, it's so simple, it's fucking brilliant. You got a billionaire owner of AEW Wrestling, even though is he really a billionaire, he just inherited it from his daddy. Doing wrestling forum style posts on Twitter. And not even doing them well. Going after Darren Ravel and everything. You're supposed to be a billionaire. Fucking act like it. If I'm one of the people working in that company, I don't like that shit. Makes me wonder. You got fans doing backflips because the show got less than 600,000 viewers and squeaked out some type of head-to-head -head victory against a against WWE in the key demo. And all of them performance and all the numbers fucking suck. Once again, so many of you were wrong. Once again, I tried to warn you, competition is not always what you crack it up to be. Those who do not learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. You cannot look at these numbers from Friday night's wrestling war between SmackDown and Rampage, WWE and AEW, and think there's any legitimate winner here. Nobody wins. Stop it. And by you feeding into this cycle of TK got one over on Vince, all you're doing is causing more long-term damage to AEW by enabling this childish-ass behavior. Stop it!
This is a loser for everybody. Acknowledge it. 